welcome to Amici V No Chibo. I'm Jeremy. I'm Carmen. Salute, my friend. So today we are doing... Carmen, explain to them what we're doing here. Yeah, so uh, we're going to do a chicken salt and boco. Um, We already did the risotto. Mm -hmm. Um, So we should go into the risotto. Yep. Let's talk about that first. So for the risotto, what we do is we start off with about... About a quarter to a third of a cup of olive oil. Cold pan, again, always starting with a cold pan, cold olive oil. Turn the heat on, bring the olive oil up to heat. I took uh, half of a small onion. Dice it up as small as you can. Uh, we saute that just till it starts to get translucent. Mm. Um, from there, we take, I like again, I like to use my garlic press. I like the garlic flavor, but I want chunks of garlic. So I take my garlic press, one clove, saute that, throw that in there. Add my salt, my pepper, my parsley, oregano. Get that going. Then I take, I have a uh, 16 ounce box of uh, risotto, which is a barrio rice. Uh, I take half of that, about eight ounces. Pour that in. And what I, what I want to do is want to toast the uh, the barrio rice, just to kind of open up the cells, toast it, let the flavors come out. Uh, in the meantime, while that's happening, I'm heating up some uh, chicken stock. You can use chicken, you can use vegetable, you can use beef. You can really use any kind of stock you want. I, I choose uh, chicken stock. Um, get that warmed up. You don't want it to, to, to boil, but you want it warm because what's going to happen is, so now that my risotto is ready, uh, what I do is ladle, ladle and a half at a time, you mm-hmm. add that to the risotto and that's how it it blooms. Yeah, I noticed the second you put it in, <clears throat> I saw that the starches were coming out of the... Yeah, out of the, you could uh, see that starch at the bottom of the pan. The uh, so I'll do like one ladle. After I do like one ladle, I'll take like a half to a cup of uh, white wine. Mm. And I'll throw that in there and I'll let that, let the risotto uh, absorb that. That just adds another layer, you know, of that cooking. And it's just slowly adding the, uh, the chicken stock until it gets to a consistency. And the only way you're going to know it's right is taste it. I put a little on a spoon, boom, and I taste it. And it's going to, when it gets to that nice texture, that's when you know it's done. Uh, from there, after that, I, um, I have, uh, have about four or five sliced uh, portobello mushrooms, the baby portobellas. Slice them up. Uh, I throw those in. And uh, there'll be a little bit of liquid in the, in the pot. And it's okay because it's going to be a little liquidy than you think it should be for risotto because I'm sure some of you have had risotto, some of you may not. Um, <clears throat> put the mushrooms in there and because those they're, they're like sponges. They're going to absorb that little bit of extra liquid and make it perfect. So I throw those in there, turn the heat off, put a top on it. And those are just sitting right now. Those mm-hmm. are just sitting and simmering. Before yeah, I, also there. Just before I uh, serve, uh, I'll throw maybe a half a cup of Parmesan cheese, mm. stir that in. It'll be ready to go. Awesome. So we want to talk about the wine. We got a wine today. I don't even know the name of this wine. It's from Italy. It's it's a, uh, from Tuscany. Uh, Familia Dante, I'm guessing, is the name of the wine. Yeah. Uh, but very nice, very nice wine. Very light, actually. But just the Italian wine is so different than it the really, American or yeah. California wines that we have, or even Oregon. Where they have like the Pinot Noirs are known yeah. for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, big event happened in, in my life. I know a lot of people are, are following me. Uh, got married this week. Yes. So first time having a ring. So I might be spinning a lot during the video, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's it pretty fresh. fresh. Yeah, <laughs> pretty fresh. But next week, Italy, Italy for Carmen and I, which yeah. I, I can't wait. And yeah. and my my wife, and his wife as well, and yeah. we're going with some other people as well. So, but yeah, the wine's uh, amazing. Uh, Carmen's teaching me the ways in the kitchen as far as risotto goes. I'm not. I've actually I've seen risotto made, but I've actually never made it myself. Uh, this is this is a, a, a dish that Carm uh, wooed his his wife with. It is. It is the first meal I cooked her. We first started dating, and I said, "Hey, why don't you come over? I'll cook you dinner." And uh, this is what I cooked her. And I made that real dinner. Very romantic. It's a very romantic dinner. It is. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's delicious. I mean, who doesn't like a night? So risotto. I mean. We've done the polenta. Yep. And yeah, my favorite. Those 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 dishes that take a long time. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's something about them. There's mm. there's time involved, and they just they you get this creation when you're done. It's like wow, this is really good. And so that's another one. This is risotto. Yeah, risotto. I can see it. it takes time. It does. It takes it's a lot of care. You know, you're and there's nothing better than standing at the stove, 
yeah. mixing risotto and sipping on a glass of it's wine. True. I mean, what what's better than that? It's like a creation. It like is a creation. creation. That's how that's why I like it. All right, but for the um, we got the chicken here as well. So we got um, already pre-sliced um, pieces of chicken. Now is this chicken breast? Yeah, chicken yeah, breast. Chicken breast. So they're sliced pretty thin. If you could see how thin that is. Um, I'm not a big uh, fan of, of taking a meat cleaver or anything like that, no. or a meat, um, what's that thing called, a meat, I'm so bad with words all the time, <laughs> Wait, uh, a tenderizer. A tenderizer, yeah. It, 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 I'm not a big fan of it. I mean, it, it definitely works. A lot of people use it, a lot of chefs use it and stuff like sure. that, but to me, I don't know, I, I kind of like a little bit of the, um, the, the feel. I don't want a super, super tender uh, chicken, to be honest with you. I mean, right. I want a moist chicken. I think that's more important than the tender right. chicken, but... So first thing we're going to do here, the ingredients that we have is the chicken itself, the chicken breast that's sliced up nice. We have our um, basil, nice fresh basil, as well as prosciutto, and we have flour as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the basil. You want to cover the chicken itself with the basil. So this piece, for example, is going to, I would say like two, two slices would be good. Mm -hmm. um, and then what you want to do is take the back of the knife and kind of just press it into the meat a little bit. So just so it's getting stuck in there a little bit. Um, so it's not going to be moving around. And you're also probably it's it's getting some of the flavors of the basil sure. out as well. Because you're, yep. you're making lines and in it. And bruising the, the yeah, leaves. Yeah, you're bruising the leaf. Yep. Yep. Then you're going to take your prosciutto. We got some really nice sliced prosciutto here um, today. So it's nice and fresh. It's pretty thin actually. Yeah. Um, and uh, the thinner the better on the prosciutto if you can get it. You got to be more. It's got to be more. You be more careful with it. It's very del delicate meat. Yeah. But you want to cover the 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 chicken now with the prosciutto. Yeah, that's um, perfect. Yeah. And, and use. I mean, be as generous as you want to be with it. Sure. Uh, this is super thin. It is. Sometimes you get it where where it's uh, they have the pieces the parchment in between. Mm -hmm. um, I've never used this this particular brand before. Um, so it's a little t little bit of a challenge working with it, but um, I think the flavor will be good. Oh yeah, I'm sure. And it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah it doesn't. So it's ripped apart. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't need full slices. I get um, actually for the wedding we just we just had on Saturday uh, last week. I got a huge leg of prosciutto. Um, it was a I think it was a 16 pound leg of prosciutto, and it was amazing, delicious. Uh, and that that went all of it went. It did at the at the wedding. Yeah. Wow. We had a hundred. I, I did my part. I when I could. <laughs> I, I think did. we had hundred and forty guests, but yeah, no, very nice time. Um, oh yeah. So then, same thing with the burju as well as what we did with the knife. Um, obviously, don't put your hand on top of it, but you just want to press it, press it in. Just is gonna kind of set it into the meat a little bit. You kind of just forcing and you're putting some pressure on it. And it's going to help it not move around again once we, we're going to be... Yeah, you can see it's almost part of the chicken here. Exactly, that's yeah. What, that's what you want. Yep. So once that's all set, you take the chicken. We have our, um, our flour mix right here, if you could see. And what we want to do here, actually, is we want to salt. Carmen, if you don't mind. Yep, sure. We're going to salt the flour first. Uh, just to season the flour a little bit. Get, get some of that seasoning yep. inside the, uh, the flour as well as uh, pepper it up. The reason I'm not layering. doing it is because I have chicken hands. Chicken hands. Yeah, chicken hands. Should have did that before, but that's all right. This is this is real cooking. <laughs> so it's like when you're hanging around your house and you're cooking with friends. This is what what happens. We say a little, little more pepper. Let's go a little bit more. Yeah. Boy, that smells good too, huh? It does. No, she like nothing like fresh craft. I'll be mm -hmm. honest with you. You mm -hmm. can get that ground pepper if you like. It takes a lot more to get flavor out. Yeah. All right, my friend. Do your thing. So you're going to plop it in there yep. and do both sides. Yep. Nothing crazy. It's not, you're not doing, you're not, um, you're, we're frying it, but we're not deep frying it. Right. So just like a nice coating on there. Perfect. Kind yep. of just banging off a little bit. You just want a nice thin layer. Any put things that you missed, maybe fill in a little bit, but you'll see what we'll be doing this in a, with, with this in a second. Oh yeah. So that's the, I mean, this is, think about it. This is kind of the Italian chicken corn. Chicken corn. Think about it. Ham, it's chicken, and there's cheese. Yeah, that's yeah, chicken corn blue. That's what I'm going with. So what we're also going to do here. So these are this is our finished product here. You can see it, and 
really we just did four of them tonight it's just really the two of us yeah. and uh, maybe Carm's wife but um, yeah now we're going to get to the stove and go through that whole bit on the stove you'll see we're going to bring some nice Fontina cheese uh, over to there huh huh my own so we're good we're good to go here so yeah let's head over to the stove and we'll take a look what that looks like right. we'll see you over there all right so first thing that you want to do on the stove is get that pan nice and hot yeah. you to get the olive oil going for a nice generous amount what you're doing you're just trying to crisp the outside of the chicken so you want a nice helping uh, of the uh, olive oil here yeah. and what we're doing here is it's a little bit different than maybe what you're used to we're going to take a whole uh, chunk of garlic, a whole, whole clove, clove yeah. of garlic. Yeah. And we're gonna drop it into the pan. And what we're gonna do is we're trying to infuse the flavor of the uh, garlic into the olive oil. So we're gonna be spreading that around, <clears throat> break it up a little bit if you want, just to get more of that flavor. I like garlic, Carmel yeah. likes garlic, so yeah. to, you know I, I stabbed it a little bit and spread it around in there and just infuse that flavor of the garlic into the olive oil, which is smells phenomenal. Smells. Every episode we've done so far, all we talk about is olive oil and uh, garlic it's, it's like our favorite it's two like favorite our, ingredients it, they are they salt are. pepper i can live on it really you know just give me olive oil and garlic and i'm good um so then the first thing you want to do you take the breaded chicken once that's hot and, and good there's a couple ways to test it we and carmen were actually talking about it at the yeah. stove a couple ways to test it one you could use the back end of a spoon carm yeah was explaining a wooden spoon yep drop it in the oil put the put the, uh, the handle the wooden handle in the spoon and if it starts to bubble your oil is hot enough um, right What's the other way you'd like the, to do the, it? The way I like to do it is I like to take a little bit of water on my finger and just kind of just like flick it at the uh, oil. And when it's crackling and bubbling a little bit, I know it's hot enough. Yeah. And even then, like you could also determine how hot it is by how much it, bobble, uh, how much it bubbles and right. you know splashes out and stuff like that. Right. So once it's at a good spot like that, you want to take the chicken, you want to put it right, um, you want to um, naked chicken face down. Meaning you don't want the prosciut down first and the basil. You want that the basil and the prosciut face up. So you're going to put the chicken down like that. Naked side. Naked that side. Good. I like that. Naked side. <laughs> and let that go. And you want to wait till it gets to a really <clears throat> nice golden golden brown uh, level. You know you don't want to burn it and you don't want it underdone. Um, I like it a little bit on the crispier side. Yeah. Um, not to say it's going to be crispy, but right. I, I like that golden brownness. And you sure. can see the, the way that happened here. And you know move it around the pan. Oh, you're working. You're, you're working the meat. You know, you're working the your food. You, yeah. you in a way, you're you're uh, you know, it's like a relationship that you're 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 having with the with the food. Right. Because you're European, you're gonna have hot spots and cool spots. Right. So you're gonna move. You're gonna see. You're gonna look. I mean, it's it's not just something you just throw in there. It's yeah. You it's not like baking. TV. It's like, like you, 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 yeah, cook, yeah. you throw it in the oven. You set the timer. That, that's not what this is. Right. I mean, it's all about. Mm, yeah, messing sure. with it and, and yep. peeking. Oh, 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 let me move it over. You know, it's well, that's what it's about. Yeah, it really sure. is. And and once it's good to go, once you think it's at a good, um, nice golden brown on the bottom, flip it over on the prosciut side and get that to a golden brown um, consistency or a golden brown, um, nice outside crust. I guess you you can call it. Mm -hmm. And once that's once that's all done, you put you want to what you want to do is plate it. Just put put it on the plate temporarily. Because what you're going to do now is you're going to what's called deglaze the pan, yeah. which is one of my favorite things my mom oh my taught me God. when I was really young. It really is. Um, and we're going to do it with white wine today, uh, the same white wine that we used for the risotto. Exactly. We're going to use to deglaze the pan. What we're doing here is all of the um, flavors from the chicken, the prosciutto, and the flour that's in there, yep. and the olive oil and the garlic. Oh. What we're doing with the white wine is we're re um, we're going to in introduce that liquid to it, which is going to break up everything that's stuck on the pan, all those different variety of flavors that are happening. And it's going to take all of that and, and mix it all together. And you want to scrape the pan a little bit, get, get as much oh, flavor yeah. as you can yeah. on, on that reduction. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen and the wine is going to evaporate. All the liquid is going to start evaporating. And you wait for it to get like a little bit a little bit thicker, nothing, right, you know. What, what happens is that, that that residual flour that's left in the pan, it, it, it tends to make like a little bit of gravy. It's almost mm. like, you know, when, when, you, when you want to make a gravy, you made your turkey, you got all the drippings, you, you know, you make it, take a little uh, uh, flour, yep. mix it yeah. with the, you know, so basically yeah, we're a making a, a quick little gravy. There's just a little bit of flour. It doesn't take much flour to just thicken that up. I mean, we're, we're not looking for a gravy. We're looking for more of like a little sauce. Yeah. Is what we're looking yeah, for. Yeah, sauce. Just to enhance the chicken. And once once you get it to that, that good consistency of sauce, like Karen was saying, you want to take the chicken and put it back in and turn that heat down. 
bring it down to a nice low and slow. Because uh, what we're going to be doing now, what we're at, the process that we're at now is we have our Fontina cheese, and we have our lemon, and we also have our capers, which I should show, but because yep. Carmen is in love with this bottle. Uh, this capers. <laughs> Carmen went all out. He got the the big bottle of capers here. <laughs> capers, I do. <laughs> they so, just add a whole level of flavor. They do. In, 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 I agree. So what we're doing here is we're going to slice up the. Uh, the fontina and where the prosciutto and the basil are sitting on top, you also want to cover that with the cheese. And like you said, it's like an, an Italian chicken cordon bleu. It, it really is. It I really didn't is. think of that till today. And I'm like, well, yeah. it's got all the same, you know, components. It's just better components. <laughs> I don't know. It's prosciutto and you know fontina cheese. So, so I like a lot of cheese. Yeah. Um, but also, I I try to do it thin too. You want to cover the whole uh, chicken itself. So. So I'm doing nothing, nothing crazy, thick, or relatively thin. And I, I, I chose the Fontina. Um, it's kind of the classic recipe. Uh, Fontina melts really nice. Yes. Yeah. It stays together. It's not oily. Mm -hmm. You know, if you do a, ch if you, like if you ever melted cheddar cheese, it can be oily. Right. The Fontina, it just, it, it almost keeps its shape, but it just, it just melts really nice. Yeah. And it it's works true. really well with this dish. It's kind of a, it's got like a buttery flavor. So we have the saltiness of the prosciutto. You got the buttery flavor of this, so it, it, it works really, really well with it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slice eight slices because we have four pieces of chicken. Mm -hmm. I figure two two slices per per chicken. That should be perfect. And all we're doing with the lemon, simple. Um, we're just going to be squeezing the lemon um, over the uh, over the chicken, which we'll show you in, in a second. And the same thing with the capers. But you'll see that over at the stove. So, over at the stove now, we got our... Chicken sitting in the, the gorgeous sauce that we mm -hmm. got going on. Mm -hmm. and what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take that cheese. We're yeah. going to start melting that cheese. We're gonna, we did two slices per um, chicken breast. We're going to put that right over it. Uh, what's nice about that is the Fontina cheese melts really nicely. Carmen yes. and I were talking about it. Yeah, It's almost like a mozzarella, but mm -hmm. it's a little bit different. It's it's a milder cheese. It's not a sharp cheese or anything no, like that. No. Now you could do it with sharp cheese if you want. That's sure, your, you could. Your, your, your taste. Absolutely. You could do it with mozzarella. You could do it with, it, with any cheese that you really yeah. like, yeah. Um, which is the beauty of, of cooking. Mm -hmm. You do it to taste. Right. Um, but what I have to do is to cover, um, if I'm melting a cheese or something like that, so I'm not overcooking or trying to get the, the meat too hot, I like to cover it yeah. so that it creates almost like... Um, a vapor barrier. I don't know how to call it. What sure, call it, it keeps the heat into it. Yeah, it's like a blanket. Yeah, it's yeah. A, a cheese melting blanket. A cheese melting blanket. <laughs> okay. And uh, so we're gonna cover that up, let that go. Yep. Then the next step is to really uh, get the lemon squeezed into the uh, over the the chicken itself, and a little bit into the juice as well. Uh, get that flowing around uh, the chicken. It's gonna flavor it really nice. Yeah. Give it yeah. a little different dynamic to it. And then last but not least, the capers. Oh, just yeah. put you know as much as you want on there. We're we're not going too crazy heavy today, but put some capers on top. That's just going to give it a nice different texture as it's, well as flavor. It's all about layers. Yeah, and that's what yeah, it does. Right. And then before we serve the risotto, yep. uh, I'll add like a half to three quarters of a cup of Parmesan Reggiano cheese to it. That's just before you serve it, and it kind of finishes the whole dish. Yeah, and you have the already ground up uh, yep. Parmesan Reggiano, yep. which is. Molto bene. Molto bene. And we, during this time, uh, we've decided to crack open another bottle of wine. Shocking. Uh, Carm, what region is this from that you said? It's, it's the Montepulciano region. Okay. In, uh, in Tuscany, which we will be visiting. That's right. We're yeah. going to visit a winery there. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a full-bodied wine. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's very red. Uh, what did you say? It was like a meal. It's like a meal. <laughs> there's a lot happening. There's, there's definitely some. You can taste the sugars in it. Mm -hmm. It's calmed down now, actually, since mm -hmm. it's been sitting out like this a little bit. Yeah, it's calmed down, which is nice. But yeah, it's a nice wine. It's, it's very good. I like them. I like them. So um, next is uh, we're gonna plate mm -hmm. and uh, manja. Oh, please, let's let's do that. Yeah. All right, we just finished up. This is the best part. Oh, I agree. And it's something we haven't been showing. Like the first two videos, we've it's been true. Showing. We're yeah. learning. <laughs> We're gonna eat this. We're gonna eat in this. front of you. We are gonna eat this because that's the payoff, right? It is. That is the payoff. Looks good, Carm. Looks good, my friend. Very good. Hmm. 
Mm. Yeah, you're definitely right with the capers. Right? Oh man, the basil. There's so much flavor going on. Right. And so, this is really good. I can see how you got married now. Huh? Sorry, I'm taking it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get that. When you eat the risotto, there's you can just taste that the depth of flavor. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And a it's nice, nice combo. It is a nice combo because the risotto is breaking up the there's, a, there's some there's salt going on in here. Yeah. You know, there's a lot, it's a punch. Mm-hmm. And this is like a smooth, silky, nice texture as well as flavor. You know, so it's yeah. really nice. It yeah, breaks it up nicely. It's a really uh, it's a really nice combination. Mm-hmm. I mean again, I mean, it's just this is the meal that wooed my wife. So yeah. with the wine, salute my friend. Thanks for joining us on Amici Vino Chibo. Again, I'm Jeremy. Carmen. And um, listen, subscribe to our channel. We'd appreciate yeah. all the love. Uh, comment below. Tell us what you think. Tell us what Absolutely. you want to see us cook. We'll put our own spin on it. As well as like our videos. Like it. Like it. Subscribe. Yeah. You know, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Um, we're here for you. We appreciate the viewing. We really do. Yeah. We're it's pretty cool. It's, hope, it's cool yeah. to see how it works. Yeah, it is cool. And we, we want we want your comments. I agree. So, uh, again, yeah. Tell us what you want us to make. We'll make it. You mm-hmm. know? And what we're trying to really do is is bring back a, a culture that we feel has been absent yeah. in a lot of, uh, in, in, you know, for so long now. It's, it was such a part of our heritage. Yeah. And now a lot of people have gotten away from it, even us. And we're trying yeah. to bring it back to, yeah. you know, we friends, are. wine, food. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Salud, my Salud. friend. Not really a table.